Um, so Jeff, why don't you share it <laughs> or organize it? I, I can't get the um, agenda on my phone, so. Okay, I can uh, share my screen if that helps and, and you'll be able to see the full agenda. That would be great for me. There you okay. go. Um, I'm happy to try to great. Thanks. move along here. Um, so call the meeting to order uh, for 11 p.m. Um, first uh, agenda item is uh, accept the motion to approve the agenda. I move, so move that we accept the agenda as, as presented. I will second that. Thanks, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we have an agenda. Um, anybody in public forum? Hearing none, we'll move on to the approval of the minutes. Um, minutes have been distributed. Except uh, the I, yeah, uh, I move to approve the minutes of February 17th, 2021 as presented. I'll second that. All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Minutes have been approved. Uh, uh, just one thing I wanted to ask about the employments data. Um, yep. Is there, I wanted to look at the data on sort of a year over year basis. And I was curious to know if I could get the Excel document that backs up the PDF. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, most of this, uh, Tim, is, is uh, literally pulling from this chart right here, the year over year yep. month versus month year over year data. Uh, and that's what that chart does. But yeah, this is this is exactly what it is. It's just a pretty large Excel file. Yeah, if you wouldn't mind sending that to me, I just want to, what I want to chart is sort of the percentage change year over year. So Absolutely. I'm happy to build it myself and send you back the file. You like, what I do for a living. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you like Excel. And we could also in incorporate that as well in the future ones. Uh, if Oh, that would be great. Yep, perfect. Okay, thank you, Nick. Yep. Tim, are you offering yourself up to all of us who might have Excel questions in one uh, Well, I do it for a living. Uh, <laughs> this I'll do for free. <laughs> um, all right. Anything else, Nick, or anybody else wants to add to the uh, employment uh, numbers? No, no I, I think I think you got most of it. I, you know, I think the recovery is. Um, the recovery is on its way, uh, right? Uh, you can see this is January months. It's it's not in apples to apples with a normal schedule, obviously because of COVID. Uh, January 2020, of course, we have not we did not hit the COVID uh, restrictions that the state of Vermont uh, put on. So as you go through, and you that's where you'll see it. March with about half the employments. April. What's pretty interesting is you can see that that trend line almost identical to the normal trend line um, and regular years, which is which is pretty uh, interesting to look at. Um, and then the recovery is is approaching. Even in March and April, the airline schedule has has changed, uh, and we'll start seeing that in May and beyond uh, as the months go on. Nick, did you talk about the difference between uh, just? last week and this week and the week before you know we're going up you know from you know i think we were hit 900 to 2000 now we're at 2800 and you know certainly we're in school vacation mode so some of that is because of that but um you know what's really nice is be the conversations we've had with the airlines you know we had one today with jet blue and everybody is gung-ho for coming back to burlington and understands what we've been through. You know, we, um, we've had the lowest deaths, I believe, in the country. And uh, that's reflective of the actions we've taken that have an adverse effect on our business. But we do believe it's gonna bounce back pretty aggressively. And we're talking uh, July, uh, you, you should see a more normal month. Great, good to hear. Hope, hope it keeps trending in that direction. Yeah. Uh, Jeff Munger is uh, should be online in just a second as well. There he is. Hey, Nick, Jeff. thanks for the text. Jeff, can you hear us, Jeff Munger?
Jeff. We don't hear you. I don't know if you're hearing us. Can you uh, can you hear me? Now we hear you. Yep. We don't see it. Can here. I get this? You hear us, Jeff? Hey, Jeff. <laughs> uh, this is not fun. It won't uh, there. Jeff, we're hearing you. Are you not hearing us? Shelly, you still here? Shelby? Vaguely. Um, Jeff, can you hear us? All right, why don't, why don't we keep All moving? Right. We'll, but, hopefully he can... Uh, All right. Um, go ahead. Keep going. I just can't seem to get the video working. Okay. We do hear you, Jeff, if you hear us. Okay. Thanks, Jeff. Okay. Um, next item on our agenda, action item, the Chamberlain School um, HVAC upgrade. Larry, is that you or Nick? Yeah, I can I can give a brief background on that. Um, it, it's uh, pretty pretty detailed in the memo there, but uh, just to uh, reiterate some history, a couple of years ago we did an acoustical test of the Chamberlain Elementary School in South Burlington. Uh, this of course was part of the noise mitigation program, and uh, the first uh, facility that we did an acoustical test as part of the noise insulation program. Uh, the school was not eligible for a full noise insulation package. However, so that they can keep the windows closed and keep the interior noise levels low, they were eligible for an HVAC upgrade. Uh, so that's what this contract is. Just earlier this year, we went out to bid uh, for an HVAC system upgrade. Uh, uh, as well as a, a grant that was awarded for 100% funding of this project. East, uh, uh, um, ECI came in at the lower, lower bid at about $1.9 million with the contingency in there. And that's what uh, we are requesting today to move forward for uh, a contract approval and to move this project forward. We are on schedule for construction for this summer when the students are out of session. Yeah. It did come in as far as what we applied for a grant significantly below what the, the price was too. So our, the grant easily covers this. Okay, so. And will all the construction be done um, this summer? Will it be completed? Yes. Good. Okay. Uh, so there are any yeah. questions? Yeah, so I was, I was just going to make the formal motion to to move to approve and recommend to the city council the uh, to enter into a contract with Angle Construction for the Chamberlain School work. Is there a second? I'll second. I'll second. I'll second. Okay. Uh, any more discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Aye. Great. I assume that uh, all in favor. Passes unanimously. All right, uh, Chair Munger, are you prepared to? Uh, we see you, we hear you. Okay. Are you prepared so, to take over on item number six? Sure, I'll try. It looks like we're uh, looking for Marie for um, the financial package. Very good. Um, I'll take it away then. So you have this month's financial package. Thank you very much, Nick. This is helpful. So the first thing I have here is just a quick summary of we received $8.7 million in our first CARES Act, and this is how we've been spending it. So as of uh, we, got a, we got a bunch of money yesterday from the FAA, so everything that we have on there has actually been paid and drawn down, which is fantastic. We have $2.5 million remaining out of that 8.7 that we started with. And the um, which we will continue to spend as the year progresses. After we do that, we are we were awarded four million dollars in the second round of stimulus money. And so I talk about that a little bit for below. We are anticipating we've applied for, we've been allocated the monies for this grant. 
under the formulation that the FAA has conducted. And we are anticipating receiving this grant whenever they send them out. We know it, they will be sending it out. We don't know whether it's in a week, but the good news is we're I, able to- I can, update, I can update just a little bit. There has been a congressional notification that was sent out uh, yesterday or the day before, which is a really good indication that this is uh, this $4 million CURSA grant is approaching. Thank you. That's excellent. And in addition, we will be able to, regardless of the date we receive the grant, it goes back, we can apply it toward expenses that go back to the end of December. So um, we will, we still have bandwidth when I current grant to cover upcoming expenses for the next couple of months. So we are positioned pretty well. And in addition, the money that just got approved at the end of last week, so we're talking about five, six days ago by the Congress and Senate does have some provisions in there for airports. We are going to be, ex we are hopeful and expecting, it looks like we will be able to get some additional stimulus money under that. We have not been it's too early for us to have been told there's, you know, some preliminary numbers, but it potentially could be uh, uh, certainly more than the second package. So, and, and uh, maybe even closer to the first package. So we don't really know yet. And I want to be careful about saying what we're getting because we don't know what we're getting um, until they go through the formulation, the calculations and give us a formal notification on that. So that's just something it that is, we're looking. Is that yeah. part of the state grant? No, this, oh, so is, this, the, is, this, this is, is a separate. This is the Biden package that they just came out with. Um, you know, the, what is it? How many trillion was it? Uh, the, the, Two. the big pack, yeah. how many? Yeah, 1.9 or something. Yeah. We don't, um, we don't get anything, Helen, from the state. Uh, the state, um, we get about a half a million dollars a year, but no stimulus money at all from the state. Right, and the state grant from that was about a billion. Okay, but this is separate, okay. Yeah, we don't get anything this is, from the state. Okay. It's all Good. the federal government. The um, debt coverage score that we have, we are about 1.47 as of the end of January that does take into account these monies that you're seeing on the chart that we're getting under the CARES Act. The year-to-date revenues for January were, um, they're about, if you remove the CARES Act money for a minute, we're about $6 million less than we were a year ago, um, year-to-date on our revenue. So that is the effect of, of just having so fewer people fly, our landing fees are down, our garage revenues are down. And, you know, I sort of lay out and hear the, the Biggest shifts in, that we have seen in year compared to prior years with our revenue. So the garage, we can see, um, I listed it out. Oh, whoops, the, I take that back. The operating revenues are approximately $7.7 .7 million lower from prior year. The largest revenue changes, our parking fees are about $3.1 million lower. Car rental, come, this is through January, so seven months. Rental cars about a million, almost 1.1 million. CFCs are $785,000 lower, and landing fees are $708,000 lower. So you know you have the profit and loss, all the revenues and expenses. So you compare all the lines, um, you know, as you as you like to do that. The Marie, that's uh, through the end of January or the beginning. That's through the end of January, through January 31st. So it's including seven months of our revenues. The expenses year to date are seven million and seventy six thousand. Uh, right now, that's about a million dollars lower if you look at compared to a year ago. And um, some of that has to do with timing of expenses. Last year, we were, uh, you know, and I think we'll we'll see that that not be as uh, maybe not be as as big next month. And some of that just has to do with timing of repairs and timing of when we pay for de-icing or even when we order. The winter as we started was not quite as bad as we would see in the typical year. So some of those expenses didn't happen uh, through the end of January, but we've seen some of those things, some of those bills coming in as we started to get snow and started to have those invoices coming in. We're seeing uh, some of those things come through a little bit higher in February. 
So, but still we are definitely trending lower, spending less money this year than we did last year on our operating expenses where it makes sense. So I sort of list out the largest um, areas that we have seen the decreases in. And, uh, you know, well, I, I you know, uh, maintenance, repair and maintenance, our equipment repairs, we haven't had quite as many things break this year. We are spending less in marketing and our salaries are a little bit lower and our overtime is definitely lower. So again, we track these month by month because things like overtime, if we have um, a lot of need to call the, the guys in, the maintenance crew in, they're not our guys, so the maintenance crew in to do snow removal, we have to keep things safe and we will continue to do that. So we have months that are higher in overtime than we will see in other months. The next bullet is talking about the AIP receivable that was at the, as of February 28th, it was about $3.5 million. I can tell you, we just received two and a quarter million dollars from the FAA yesterday. And I anticipate by the end of this week or early next week, we'll receive about another uh, $270,000. So we're con constantly, we, these are reimbursement grants. So we put in those requests. So we spend the money, we pay the vendors or pay the invoices, and then we submit a, a, to the FAA for a reimbursement. And we do not owe any money right now under the uh, grant anticipation note. The cash update, so as of February 28th, we had $11.1 .1 million in our airport, in our main checking account, and we did not owe the city any money. The next bullet is talks a little bit, we had a lot of activity going on um, with the bond refinancing. And yesterday we officially closed on those bonds. So they were sold last week. And I wanted to communicate sort of the high level items that were important that I thought you might be interested in in the bond. So they were, they were pretty well received in the market. These are taxable, just that how we had to deal with this time because we're refunding existing bonds. So we didn't have an option to do them as non-taxable like municipals normally do. Um, the, let's see, we are postponing the, the fundamental of two years of debt, principal and interest. We have a little bit of interest that we'll be paying the second year in, but we've been able to postpone those payments and we, we bonded for them essentially and we'll be paying small amounts out each year. Our bond payments that we'll make each and every year will be very, very stable and be very level. And then the last two years, um, we'll have the biggest part of the payoffs. We have another bond that'll be falling off those payments. And so we're able to, um, again, keep them pretty level and stable as we go forward. The average coupon price on these bonds that we sold and just closed on yesterday was 2.9%. That is the coupon, uh, you know, the average actual cost that we will be paying. And uh, so the next bullet, in order to sell the bonds, we had them rated by Moody's. And I've included a number of things at the end of the package or as part of the package. So I have a chart here, Moody's, they were very optimistic. It was a very good meeting that we had with them. And they affirmed our airport credit rating, which is BAA2 and they gave us, uh, affirmed our stable outlook. I gave you a chart there so you can see, because for those, uh, it's interesting to look at where we were back in 2012 and where we have gone forward. You know, there were some tough years financially for the airport and that was not viewed very well by the rating agencies that um, even in the middle of a pandemic and everything else, Moody's had a lot of very positive, recognized where the airport is today and how well prepared we were coming into our, so for example, our cash reserves and all of the things that had been done to mitigate the effects and the risk of the unknown certain uncertainty of the COVID. So I've included those things. I've also thought it might be interesting. There was a press release that the mayor did. So I've included that. I thought you'd be interested to read that and if you, in case you didn't see that come out in another way. And I also included the Moody, Moody's rating because I thought that would be very interesting as well. Does anybody have any questions on those sorts of things? So you have the rest of the packet is what I normally do. Um, the profit and loss summary is through the end of January. The AIP receivable and the cash are through the end of February. 
And our debt coverage score that you see before you is through the end of January. So those are the highlights of the financial information for this month. Anybody so Marie, have any questions? Yeah, I just one for Marie. So did do I remember correctly that you had said once this these new bonds get issued that we wouldn't be tracking the debt coverage score anymore? You're correct, Tim, and you have a good memory. So for this current year that we are in, fiscal year 2021, which ends June 30th, we do have a requirement of a debt coverage service score. And that is because we make our payments on the principal and interest. We actually make them on the first day of the year the biggest portion of our payment. So we that's long gone. We did that July 1st. And again, January 1st, we would have paid interest. So we paid all of our debt service that was required this year. So we are absolutely subject to the debt coverage score calculation. Starting in July of so 2021, so fiscal year 22 of the year that's coming up, we will have no debt. So we will have no debt score calculation. There's no, there's no calculation to be made right. um, under, under the bond covenant. So we got a bit of a reprieve and time to recover fully from as the, uh, the, the pandemic comes, you know, gets less and comes to a, an end or however that plays out, we, we do anticipate having quite a rise in employment, but it will take some time to get back to the full levels that we were at. Right. And then once we start making payments under the new bonds, then we would resume some type of liquidity ratio again, right? Or no? Okay. Correct. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, and we'll still be able to calculate things like debt, debt, you know, um, not debt, days cash on hand. There'll be some liquidity issues that they will be looking at. Uh, the rating agencies will continue to want to see where we are and remaining strong. But the debt coverage score, we will get, that will be a mute point for a little bit. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Hmm. Any other questions? So do I have a motion to accept uh, Marie's report and place it on file? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, 6.02 is our construction update. Uh, I assume that Larry is um, on board. Um, yes, um, fairly minimal because of our, you know, just having our last meeting and then the one in between. So I'll just go right. quickly. Um, so the, and just in the last couple of days with the good weather we're seeing, we will be starting the air carrier ramp apron uh, phases 7-1 and 6A next week. Uh, that's new since I posted this update. So that's good news that we've got everything worked out with the funding and the um, the contract is on, uh, waiting for Gene to sign tomorrow. So we're, we're starting to move next week. Um, moving down through um, the, the TIP project is progressing. Um, we actually, uh, Gene signed all the permit applications today. Uh, best, you know, if everything goes perfectly, um, we're in hopes um, with regard to, you know, um, uh, notification periods and all that to have all permits within the next 90 days and then start start construction. Um, we are before the um, South Burlington DRB on um, April 6th for a, for a sketch plan review. And then in turn, we'll be ready right after that to submit for preliminary and final uh, uh, plat review um, for that. Uh, new security system, we uh, went through some uh, uh, things with Buy American. We had to meet certain thresholds with the FAA. We finally got that um, noticed in it. That got approved a couple of days ago. So that uh, project is now gonna move forward in the next couple of weeks. So we'll be getting uh, the, the new security system. Um, Nick talked about the Chamberlain School. We've had our pre-construction meeting. We had to give a limited notice to proceed because some of the items were long lead items with regard to the, the equipment that needs to be uh, placed at Chamberlain. So we've, we've, real, we've, we've, start, we've started that work preliminarily to get the contractor to start to be able to order things. So we meet the, that little time frame we have this summer to get this project done. Um, sound insulation project. Um, I could talk a little bit about that, Larry. Yeah, go for it. Yeah. Um, yep. yep. Uh, so, so uh, a couple of updates. Uh, Chamberlain, of course, is part of that project, and you've you've already heard about that uh, in multiple ways tonight. Uh, the sound monitoring system. Uh, we are moving forward contractually with uh, Vector, is the company that we're working with. 
Uh, they'll be the ones working with the Jones Payne Group, which I think you'll you'll find is a familiar name, uh, one of our major consultants that helps us with the sound program to install these noise monitors. Uh, uh, we are looking and will continue to work actually with uh, Mayor Lott and her team, as well as the city of South Burlington uh, and the city of Williston on staging or setting up these physical sound monitoring systems and the back end, which is a web portal online so that people can visually see the noise monitoring. That's expected to be implemented both online and physically in the field by July uh, and available to the public. Um, the sound insulation uh, project itself uh, is moving forward very quickly. We, we uh, uh, heard from the FAA that they actually are allowing us to move forward with some design work only, uh, which we weren't expecting this year, but it will set us up really nicely uh, later this year and into next year. And what that means is not only are we moving forward with the 10 house pilot program, design, working with the homeowners and construction of those 10 houses uh, for a grant this year, but also the design work of the next 50 houses. Uh, and, and that would set us up for a construction grant for next year to construct those 50 houses, as well as design the next 50 houses. And that's that rotation every single year. Uh, we also are working with the Department of Defense. Uh, and I forgive me, I always forget the name of the, um, the branch that we're working with. The acronym is OLDCC, the, the branch of the DOD. Uh, they, they have set aside or appropriated $50 million nationwide to be used as, for joint use airfields, uh, just like ourselves. And we're working with them to see if we can capture a significant amount of funding uh, so that we can move forward um, uh, with even, even more houses every year. And, and again, working with Vermont Gas Systems to capture the 10%, this DOD funding would take us even beyond that. Uh, that uh, five million or so dollars a year. I think and I covered there, everything. Yeah, go ahead. Can I? Uh, ask Jeff, you? Oh, just a second. Um, Jeff Munger. Yeah. Um, I just want to make sure you know that we heard you loud and clear at the last meeting about that ten percent and you know uh, Fed funds and Fed funds and yeah, not yeah. not being and we have uh, we have mentioned that to the DoD. We have mentioned that to the FAA. Everybody, just so you know, Jeff, we listened to you, we vented it with them, and they're aware, you know, of your concerns and your mention. Well, what did um, they so, say? <laughs> More important. Uh, what I got was, yes, but. And um, so I think they're working it out. They're trying to figure out how to do that. And uh, they didn't have an answer, Jeff. So, yes, you were 100% right, but that appears that change is being made. There are some examples that they said that they have done before and uh, they would get back to us. So um, I That's think- That's good news. Yeah, and well, I just want you to know we heard you. I yeah. hate to have you thinking in your head that you would have to say it again because I really did hear you. And, um, and I, you know, the next day I called everybody and made them aware uh, of your concerns. So um, we, what I, also got Jeff was that we're a long ways from this being solidified, you know, the details. And what I heard from DOD is it could be as much as two years. Um, and it doesn't mean that the project's going to slow down. It just means we're going to be working with Vermont Gas longer. And as soon as they do, Nick has a lot of thoughts. I mean, the guy is about as creative as creative gets to utilize the D uh, Department of Defense dollars. And he's yeah. already started talking to um, the FAA about an acceptance of different procedures and ways to move forward in this project so that we can accelerate the project and do more, more quicker. And uh, it doesn't mean like anything was approved, but been great conversation. And one thing uh, Nick Longo uh, doesn't lack is imagination and creativity. Um, I mean, when the, the stuff that comes out of his mouth, I just like, where did that come from? And it came from just not being afraid to think and dream. And so uh, he's done very well for us. 
And, and just to just to kind of detail just a little bit of what Gene is talking about, uh, while it would be really great to have that that um, uh, redundant way of funding the 10% share, so to speak, what not only with Vermont Gas Systems, but with the DOD funding, what we're thinking is if we can capture the 90% federal, we already have a great partnership with Vermont Gas Systems to fund the 10% share. Why not look at designing all 2,600 houses or those that are eligible right now using the DOD funds uh, so that we can get ahead of the game. And then when we ask the FAA for construction funding, then the 90% and the 10% from FAA and Vermont Gas respectively uh, is already available to us using the DODs to get ahead of the game. Uh, so that's that's an alternative that we're that we're playing with. And like Gene said, it it may take some time. Okay. I have to... Go ahead, Helen. No, you can finish and then. I just wanted to say, I, you know, I, there's a lot of things that what I realize is we do a terrible job telling you the day to day details of the things that we're working on because every day they change. But just want you know, there's all sorts of creativity. And, you know, Helen, I just want you to know we do listen to South Burlington and Winooski's, you know, concerns. And every day we advocate for those. So, um, you know, that's part of what Nick is talking about. You know, sometimes, you know, people make the airport like it's the evildoer. It's actually God's gift to this earth, you know, that we're able to go out and get all these federal funds and then leverage the position that we have in our community ends up benefiting. It's not the airport, you know, so it would be terrible to have all the sound that we have and have no instrument. So, again, I just want to, you know, say, Nick, thank you, Shelby, uh, Larry, you know, for everything you're doing to make this come through. Go ahead, Helen. Yeah, I just had a question to clarify in terms of the noise that the monitors will be monitoring. Is that just commercial noise or does it include the military jets? It, it includes every single aircraft that oh, okay. That, so that's it, what, it, okay. it's a physical microphone essentially out in the field that's going to pick up that noise. The, the difference is, you know, you're going to get a lot of ambient noise, uh, fire trucks, regular street traffic all that type of stuff. What this does is it takes that noise and associates it with radar data so that you know it's coming from an actual aircraft. And that's the visual display that, that's gonna be available to the public. Great. Would you like Thank us you. to exclude the jets or not? Cause you know, no. there would be nothing to listen to. That is true. So- um... <laughs> Except the fire engines. <laughs> right. So point of clarification, are these outside or are they inside structures? They're These exterior, they're exterior. exterior structures. So think okay. of a, a trailer, if you will. Uh, it's a small box. Uh, it's it's uh, it could, it, it's a, a permanent, uh, so to speak, box that's set on the ground. And then it's an exterior microphone that's pretty much on a, a small pole. Okay. But it can be moved around, correct? Yeah, it, it's it mobile. Does have, it's mobile uh, in that sense. It's mobile, but it's also solar operated. So cool. Um, you know, it's actually very, very movable. Um, so you know, that's part of the plan uh, that you know Nick and uh, worked on is making them mobile. In in the eyes of the FAA, it, it is a permanent structure, but they they do have wheels so that we can uh, uh, perform maintenance on them as well. Okay, great. Thank you. All right. Um, so I'll continue along. I'm um, the only yeah. other thing. Hello. Whoops. Um, the only thing I would mention on that is the current 10 and 50 home package. Um, we have the scope and fee to move that forward. We're going through the independent fee estimate process to get that approved and are already uh, preparing the grant application to get that moving forward. So we're not waiting um, for our May 1 or whatever we're going to get done as soon as possible. Um, 10, the environmental assessment, uh, just learned this week from Nick, he talked to the FAA, that that's probably going to be taken off the table for this year, which is not such a bad thing because basically the projects we have in the future might be able to do, go through that type of process at a lower level uh, that's called a, a categorical exclusion. So uh, not all bad news that we aren't going to get that grant this year, but it might allow us that we don't have to go such through such an extensive process for the projects we have identified. So that's, that's to come. Um, uh, the stormwater and UIC um, uh, 
proposals that you approved in our interim meeting um, have uh, um, are all set, approved by city council, and um, I am dra we're drafting the contracts, and those contractors are already moving forward because we have st strict deadlines for April one deadlines. So uh, we'll get the contracts taken care of this week. Um, Hotspot remediation project uh, and Pappy relocation. Uh, we're 90% drawings as of yesterday, and um, we will uh, be out to bid in a couple of weeks uh, with a pre-bid conference on April 8th with pricing back April 28th for a May 1 grant application. Um, NOAA National Weather Service terminal res renovations. Um, the project's out to bid. Um, we had three contractors. Now it appears we have two more additional five interested. So we've pushed back the deadline for bids from next Tuesday to next Thursday to allow them to get um, into the, the space this week. Um, and so we'll have pricing next week to, to, to move that forward. Uh, Nick already spoke about the uh, monitoring equipment. Um, and if that's all I got, does anybody have any questions for me? Well, hearing none, uh, do I have a motion to accept uh, the construction update and uh, place it on file? So moved. Do I have second. a second? Helen, you seconded? Yep. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, item 7.01 would be the South Burlington update. Hey, the only thing I have to report is we're um, right now going through a um, very active um, phase of working with the CCRPC, the Chittenden County Regional Planning Commission, um, around the interchanges on um, 89 and one of the questions asked um, at a meeting and we had break was cool we had breakout meetings um, all the counselors broke out in one of those meetings with Charlie Baker and we were asked to, to really think about are there other <clears throat> criteria that should be included and one of the things that I thought was missing so I suggested they include it is to use a criteria that talks about um, each of the different options, uh, and there are four, um, how that would um, improve uh, transportation movement to and from the airport. I realize I was told that, that you guys aren't actively involved in these conversations because <clears throat> you have submitted a plan that has a whole nother um, option to connect with the interstate farther north. But from my perspective and South Burlington's, I thought it was important and for the airports, frankly, to make sure that whatever um, tens of millions of dollars of improvements um, that are suggested can ha might have a, a real positive effect um, for airport um, access. Ellen? Yes. Somebody gave you some bad information. Um, we have been very actively involved in all intersections and, oh, okay. have, put, and have put on record that we support all of them. Um, what we don't want to do is get into some political horseshoe, um, you know, about you know, going back and forth and what's right for our community. Okay. We will benefit from any one of those intersections. And we do not have a dog in the game as far as the likelihood of you getting <clears throat> FAA funds for a north exit out of the airport is probably not in my lifetime or in yours or in anybody on the phone. Um, so we um, really believe that any intersection will be good for South Burlington and will be good for the airport. What is good for you is good for us. So somebody gave you very bad information. Okay. We have talked to Charlie and his team and that is what we have let them know, that we support each and every one of them. Nick Longo and Larry have even gone so far to gone, uh, give them some affordable connection points. Um, and we were very, very involved in interactive and inexpensive solutions. Um, we've gotten very creative. Again, you know, Nick and Larry are just crazy great with ways to make things work. If there isn't enough money, then there's a couple other ways to do it. So. Uh, that's just uh, not the case, what you heard. It's just the opposite. Uh, both of them have been very engaged um, in that process. We, okay. we, did, 
we did also just as a side reference change our master plan a little bit this year okay. based on the 2050 uh, study and working with uh, CCRPC's team on that uh, in, uh, specifically with that north exit or the 14 okay. n I believe it was uh, called before uh, so we we uh, essentially eliminated that from our master plan still show it a little bit lightly on the master plan but uh, okay. not as strongly as before Good. Are you opposed to support. having that criteria added? No, we're really open to absolutely anything okay. that the city wants or the region. We really believe any, any intersection will give relief to the, you know, the problem that we're having right now. So uh, we support anything and everything. Okay, good to know. That's all I have. That's you know the only issue with the airport that's come forward. May I ask another question? Uh, and I don't probably think you have an update, but if you do, um, it would be great. Um, we had a conversation with uh, City Manager Dorn about the looking into the rezoning of the land north of the dog park. Have you uh -huh. heard any conversations about that? Well, I haven't because the Planning Commission is pretty well focused on um, updating the LDRs uh, uh, under um, interim zoning, but I think that is on the short list going forward. Would you mind, uh, as part of your plan in the future, just giving us an update, maybe just checking in each month and seeing sure. if there's any headway? It's very important. Um, yes, it is. We, we, we've taken a very small part so that uh, the community could digest it. And we felt it was the part that would have least uh, conflict and would give the most benefit to South Burlington. So um, we really hope um, that we can make make it through that in, in this year. And um, so if you wouldn't mind and could help us with it, it would be really, really helpful for everybody involved. Um, you know, one thing we don't really need is land that isn't being you know, serving its purpose at the best possible way. And certainly that area We've had many takers that were interested, um, of, you know, doing things there that would bring great talk, tax dollars to South Burlington and significant benefit to the airport, uh, sure. which I would sound as a win-win. So um, anything you could do to help out and just give us an update each month would be wonderful. Kevin seemed very engaged mm -hmm. um, in, uh, you know, presenting it and very open to it. He was very helpful, um, but I understand, you know, he's winding down, but, uh, you know, I do think it's something that we should try to put some energy into if we could. Okay, I will do that. I will um, make that contact tomorrow. Thank you. You're welcome. So Helen's all done. Um, I believe the next thing on the agenda is the director's report. Am I correct? It is. Um, <laughs> you've heard a lot of the wonderful news that the team has been working on. Um, the uh, the good the best part for me is you know 800 more people you know since last week that was just a beautiful jump, and I'm very excited about it. Uh, Nick and I and Shelby have spent a fair amount of time speaking to the airlines as early as today with JetBlue, and you know they're very optimistic and very engaged at coming back to Burlington. They understand what we had to do to have the success that the state have, and they're very engaged when the demand is there to be back. So everybody's kind of calling on, you know, June, July, August to be our turning points uh, for all the airlines. But uh, feeling good, and uh, I'm very excited about that. The um, one wonderful thing that happened today was today was a historical day at Burlington Airport, and we had our first electric aircraft land this morning um, at uh, at Burlington Airport, a Beta aircraft landed today came in from plattsburgh and uh it was really really exciting so uh we're very happy about that you know that's our uh you know they've done so very well they're on their um second model of this um uh, this type um and uh, that's being built and i think they nick did they say it would be done in a month or when did they say uh, i believe so i think it's significantly uh, put together inside the hangar so they have two in there right now so um, we're quite excited about that. Um, that's a big deal for us. Um, another initiative, and I think I mentioned this at our last meeting, but uh, the mayor has asked me to uh, work on the carbon footprint you know, of the airport. 
And uh, we are taking that task very seriously. We have a committee we've put together and we'll continue to build on that committee and the actions. We're about a week and a half old, um, but um, we're gonna be really diligent you know, about that. And uh, one of the things we most recently did is uh, we uh, uh, ordered uh, two new electric lawnmowers, uh, the ride along ones. So uh, we're gonna test those out and uh, potentially buy a third one. We have two electric uh, trucks on order that will come in in January. Um, when we do the new uh, tip building, the, uh, we're going to uh, do everything we can to make it uh, be as energy efficient and self-sufficient as possible, you know, solar, battery backup, um, everything we can do to make it green. Um, but at the same time, looking at the entire airport and, uh, you know, uh, I, I guess I have three years to turn this around. So we're going to work really hard to uh, make that happen. Um, we, uh, Nick and I went on Kurt Wright's show uh, on Tuesday, and that was a lot of fun. And uh, we had some very you know, interesting questions, and uh, they but answered them very well. Um, we, uh, um, you know, we, I just, we just continue to do great things and uh, things are going very well. I'm very proud of the team and uh, how well they've worked out through this whole COVID period. Uh, our maintenance team uh, just continues to do wonderful things and maintain and take care of the airport at a very high level. Uh, the uh, admin team, again, is uh, doing the same. Um, and all in all, you know, Marie has just done very well. We'll be hearing from Fitch uh, probably sometime in the next week. On uh, we met with them this week, and uh, you know, I don't believe they're as open-minded as you know uh, Moody's. Uh, Moody's was very engaged. It seemed like they were very, they digested the airport. They were very aware and uh, every everything that we did. Um, Moody's was very complimentary of the city, very complimentary of the airport. Fitch was complimentary, but it didn't feel like they were going to move. Um, you know, they seem to be somewhat conservative of the whole uh, airline industry, and uh, they will move when the industry moves. Um, so uh, that's what I kind of got from that conversation. Um, but again, Marie, Shelby, Nick, Andrew um, did a wonderful job putting the presentations together, and it went very well. Um, we are talking, have been talking with Michael Lum, you know, our airline consultant, and uh, we'll be meeting with a couple new airlines um, over the next couple weeks looking for new service. Um, again, even though we don't really deserve it right now because of our numbers, you need to plan for tomorrow and plant the seeds, and that's what we'll be doing. Um, I believe if you don't plant those seeds, and there's some of the same people that have worked for other airlines that we know quite well. So I believe we will get our foot in the door and at least plant the seed and be ready to have conversations when we do very well. Um, that's about it. Anything else, Nick, that you can think of? I think you covered uh, uh, quite a bit. Yeah, I think that was okay. great. All right. Any questions for me? Gene, just one question. You, you brought it up with the planting the seeds. I know that obviously a lot has been thrown into turmoil because of COVID. But prior to that, you were um, looking into service to Boston. And I'm curious to know if you, obviously it's hard to tell at this point, but do you think that whoever that was, they might come back to the table after, after we're through this pandemic? They're already at the table. Um, you should know me well by, better than that by now, but I've been, um, uh, I, you know, I got a flat out no, but we're still interested. Um, and having the conversation. What they said was it won't be this spring because we're looking for a rebound from Vermont, um, but we are very interested in having the conversation and uh, staying engaged. And so what I did is I also, that's who I spoke with today, their other partner, and they were also interested because they have to work with each other to pull off Boston. So uh, we're working both sides, Tim. And so uh, we will, um, I mean, we were, we met with the head of planning on one end of it and then uh, planning on the other. And I am optimistic, you know, basically if, if we can, if our numbers look good, 
uh, you know, this fall, we're going to be able to have a really good conversation. And uh, but we're going to need to bring it back. And uh, otherwise, nobody's coming to the table. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? So next on the agenda is, is it the sound complaint? I can't, I don't correct. see it. In this, so yeah, sorry, my complaint. computer was running a bit slow. Uh, you're correct. It's 9.01 sound data and, okay. and other commissioner's items. Okay, is there, is there gonna be discussion about this? Um, Oh, here we are. What do we got here? Going to explain this? <laughs> sure. Go ahead, Shelby. Yeah, so this is the sound data that has uh, from January 1st on. Um, so essentially through February, January, February, there was 26 calls that we did receive. And these are the locations associated with those 26 calls. Wow. Um, all of them were related to military noise. Um, and then here is the further kind of cumulative map. 18 from Winooski. Interesting. Um, if I can zoom in a little farther, I, I believe it does get a little bit more sparse, but um, a big majority is kind of in the new north end that we have discovered. <laughs> And if I remember correctly, we had an issue that there were basically the same people calling repeatedly. Is that still in this data or has that been factored out? Um, the people that do call repeatedly are, and uh, we've kind of zoned in into neighborhoods, are identified in that kind of yellow area. Um, so effectively in a conjoined neighborhood here, there's 90 calls and a majority of them are from the same street. Okay. If you'd like to see it a different format um, for unique addresses, I, I'm happy to pull that together as well. Yeah, well, I know there, there's there's concerns on sensitivity of unique addresses, so I, I wanna be, yeah, but we be can respectful of that. I, what I'm just trying to avoid is it's, you know, somebody who's calling, you know, five or six times and it makes it look like that area gets five or six times as many noise complaints, which is technically true, but if you factor in it's, it's repeat callers or repeat people submitting information, then it may, it may distort the, the results. How about for next month, we also provide a quantity of unique addresses. So right. out of the 196 total, how many are from a singular address and kind of maybe parse it down there? Do you have it also by the date of the call? Because I can appreciate that, you know, you get someone really irate and they call five times in one day. Um, or is it, you know, when the jets fly on Thursdays, it's the uh, route they take um, is right over their house. So every Thursday in a month, it is annoying and they call. We do. We have it by date. We also have it by timestamp of submittal. Okay. So we have kind of all of these parameters and we can present it in any way you'd like if you have any other feedback for us as a follow-up item, which we can add to the new section. You well, know, I what, think, go ahead. Go ahead, Helen. Well, I was just thinking in, in terms of Tim's concern, if, if the information was shared so that um, it was kind of discrete um, occurrences and not, that might be helpful if it's from the same address rather than put it all together. Okay. And, and, and in the past it has been, you know, the you'll see the groupings, you know, and the repeat uh, folks. And, you know, again, I don't want to in any way say that they're not being bothered or they're, they're an habitual, you know, reporter, but there, I think there's areas and I think it's pretty evident. And maybe, uh, Nick, do we show the flight path? Well, I was, yeah, I was going to mention that. You know, having the flight path would be really interesting to see how that lines up. Because I think mm -hmm. that's really key because, you know, I talked mm -hmm. to different people in the community. And when, you know, like a gentleman um, from Burlington called, and I just said, mm -hmm. how can you even hear them? 
And it really depends where you're at if it really bothers you. But if you're inside a hill, um, you know, like over by the university, I mean, it's it's pretty loud over there. Um, yeah. So I, I, I do think it's worth, um, you know, having some discussions and understanding, even if you get somebody who gets 30 reports, it might be, if you look at that flight path, it might be interesting to actually line up and see why they're they're doing it. And then some people are just bothered and they're anti F-35 or anti-war. Yep, those folks, you know, they're gonna do it. But then there's others that when they're flying, they're just really bothered. And, uh, and I understand that. Yeah, because I, I was gonna share that because, you know, my own experience was, I mean, I, I've been in, inside in buildings most of the time when they go over, but two Sundays ago, uh, my wife and I were out on Ethan Allen Homestead, walking out on the peninsula. And there were 12 F-35s that went over. And it was a different experience to be out in an area where there were no buildings, you know, no leaves on the trees. There was nothing to absorb the sound. And it was incredibly loud. Yeah. So I hear what you're saying, Gene. It's, it's a lot of it could be you're just in the right place and the contours of the land. But it was almost deafening how loud those were. I went, I got a couple of called me from Winooski and I looked at the flight path and then I said, well, where do you live? And so I drove up there and I sat there on a day that I knew that they would be, you know, on a Saturday actually when they were flying. Oh my God. You know what I mean? And it's like, you can't judge it till you go to it, you know? And uh, so you're, you're dead on Tim. You know what I mean? We need to be sensitive I just don't want to think because we get 30 from one location that somebody's, you know, messing with us. It, it right. could be that that noise is messing with them. So uh, I think we need to be fair and uh, look at each one independently. And, uh, and I mean, each one has a story, I guess, is what I'm saying. That's all I have. Um, but I'm happy to answer any questions if any anyone has any further ones. So, but I. Think all this, um, this is quite a, um, you can dig deep in the, the uh, at a. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Um, do we have the next meeting date? Um, it should be uh, the 19th, uh, wait a minute, the um, 21st of April. You know. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Take care, everybody. Take yep. care. Take care. Can I ask a quick question? How many people have their vaccines that are on the phone right now? I have both. I have both. And I'm flying out um, in two weeks, or actually three weeks. And so I'm we have from Massachusetts.